Cap registered as a third party in this recent federal election for the first time. I'm with Tamson Henry, General Counsel here at Cap, to talk about the processes. Tamson, at a very high level, what's the difference between a regulated and non-regulated activity? Okay, so it's the Canada Elections Act that regulates certain third party activities in a pre-election period and an election period. And so for our purposes, when we think about regulated activities, there's three main categories. The first one is certain types of advertising. The second is partisan activities and the third are election surveys. And so when we talk about the advertising, in the pre-election period it's called partisan advertising. And so if you post something with paid placement costs that promote or oppose a party or candidate, that would be partisan advertising. Similarly, in the election period, it's referred to as election advertising and it's exactly the same thing with the added component of issue advertising. So if you promote or oppose an issue with which a party or candidate is associated, then that is election advertising. And that covers a lot of what CAP does as an organization. So that was one of the reasons we had to register. For partisan activities, it is any activity that promotes or opposes a party or candidate. This is very broad. It's new this year in the legislation. So it created a bit of uh, confusion. And what this, it covers telephone calls, emails, texts, or social media posts. Again, so that was a, a big area for us. So can you explain some of the difficulties as it relates to uh, issues advertising? Well, on the issue advertising particularly, uh, Elections Canada came out with some additional guidance mid-course where they said promoting or opposing an issue is an issue with which a party or candidate is associated or may become associated. So that was a bit of a moving target that we had to monitor very closely because you couldn't just rely on the party's platform or the candidate's platform on their website. You had to monitor social media because as soon as they did a post or an interview where they started talking about an issue, all of a sudden that's an issue with which they're associated. And so something that seemed not to be a regulated activity on an issue last week could suddenly become one. Okay, so let's get into some examples. If a company posts a, uh, a tweet about the carbon levy and doesn't pay to boost it, uh, what situation is that? So that's an issues-based post. It's not technically advertising because there's no paid placement costs. And so issues alone are not regulated unless they're advertising. So that would not be regulated in the pre-election period or the election period. But if you suddenly changed courses and you incurred some placement costs to boost it, in the election period, that would then become election advertising. Posting a video of Justin Trudeau, uh, regulated or non-regulated? So a video of a party or candidate uh, will always be regulated in some form, either as a partisan activity if there's no placement costs or as partisan or election advertising if there are placement costs. And that's because again, Elections Canada came out with some additional guidance that said, what does promote or oppose mean in this context of the legislation? It means identifying a party or candidate by their likeness, by their logo, by a photograph, drawing, or even a post with a link that does any of those things. That's what they consider promoting or opposing to me. So what did you do from a compliance perspective to prepare for all of this? It was a lot of work. In short, a lot. <laughs> it was quite an extensive uh, process to go through in a very short period of time with little guidance from Election Canada. So basically we had to obtain board approval to register at the outset. We then had to develop a rigorous compliance policy for our staff and members. We then had to roll out the policy, train our staff on the policy and our expense approval process. We had to hire a financial agent and then submit the application. And then once we were registered, we had to comply with all the additional financial requirements, which included filing interim expense returns, uh, appointing an auditor and things like that. Well, I know the review team, the compliance team, the communications team worked many, many hours uh, to get through all of this. So thanks for taking the time today to explain that process to us today. Thank you.